Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Merry Christmas, wildlings. Now, I'm a fan of the holiday season, and where I live, most people are. There are those who take things a degree too far. You know the ones with the decorations already up in September, as if it'll stretch out the feeling of the day for as long as they want it to. It's almost as if they want every day to be Christmas. Well, if you've ever listened to pastas about desires and wishes, you know where this one's going. Today's Christmas Creep Fest. No gifts this year. From the Creepy Pasta Wiki. When I woke up this morning, I found the house to be empty. It was strange. I seriously doubt that my family would leave for my aunt's house without me. And on Christmas morning? No, something wasn't right. All the miscellaneously placed pictures of me that were on the walls and the hearth were gone. All other photos were still in place. But another thing that struck me as odd was the fact that there were no gifts that just last night were meticulously put under the tree this morning. What the hell? I thought to myself. Everything is gone. Even the presents I left from my parents. Just then I heard a low, guttural growl that made me practically jump out of my skin. I quickly turned my head to see my dog baring her teeth. In a semi-defensive position, she stared at me with a terrified look in her eye as she growled. I took a step toward her and she ran to the other room as fast as she could. She did leave a nice piss stain on the carpet though. Shit, I muttered under my breath, something definitely isn't right here. I walked through the house and everything was a mess. Tables and chairs were turned over, lamps were smashed, it looked as if a tornado had gone through the place. I felt like shit. I guess a good analogy would be that I felt as the house looked. I felt as if a cement truck had just punched me in the gut. Then I went upstairs to go to the bathroom and wash myself. The smell of cigarette smoke and cheap booze filled the air. I wondered what was going on. In the bathroom, I looked in the mirror and, I must say, I looked like a picture of the living dead. I was white as friggin' sour cream. My pupils were dilated to a size I never knew natural eyes could get to. It was almost as if my eyes themselves were black. Quite disconcerted, I walked through the house at a slow pace, taking my time. I noticed that my father's black suit and tie were missing. That shouldn't be anything disturbing to me, but for some reason, I couldn't shake the bad feeling coming from within my gut. As I walked down the stairs, I looked out the window and noticed that my dad's black Cadillac was missing from the driveway. So was mom's Chrysler 300C. I was pissed that they'd just leave me alone like this. Um, whatever. It was only three miles to my aunt's house. So I put on my jacket, walked out the door quietly, being careful not to scare my dog more than she already was. It was a cold day, which was to be expected in a late December day on Capitol Hill, Boston. There was a mass of people congregated around the junction around three blocks away from my house. I couldn't make out any details, but I could see the outline of a black car. It had hit the side of a two-family house. The front half of the car was inside the damn living room. I had a natural aversion to things like that, so despite being worried about the driver and potentially the passengers, I kept moving. Nothing else seemed to be out of the ordinary on my walk. It was just your typical Bostonian good morning, which was a bump on the shoulder and any of the several established cuss words. I arrived at my aunt's house about two hours after setting off. Yes, I took my sweet time. Looking in the window, I could see several family members, nuclear family included, huddled around the table. I was mad as hell, but then I took a good, hard look at everyone inside. All of them had a somber look on their faces for such a joyous holiday. Each person also had a black suit or dress on. 
By then my anger had faded and I quietly walked through the door as opposed to bursting through, which is what I wanted to do at first. As soon as my foot crossed the threshold, a bright light enveloped me. I felt like I was drowning in light and then everything went dark. When I came to, I walked out of my room and there was still nothing under the tree. Both cars were still gone. I was more confused than when I woke up this morning. There was no way that my parents would have brought me home and left me there to go back to my aunt's house. Well, I decided to go back. Once again, I put on my jacket and left the house. I remembered that about three blocks away there had been an accident. I figured that eh, I wouldn't be a pussy this time and decided to check it out. The crowd was gone and there were only two squad cars. One was on the corner and the other was right next to the crashed car. I walked right up to the car and was disturbed by the fact that the cop, eating a donut and reading the Boston Globe, didn't take notice of my presence despite the fact that I walked right by them. I dreaded looking inside the car and hesitated for a few seconds. I wasn't going to let myself just walk away even though I felt like I was going to throw up. I bent over and was horrified to see a bloody pulp of a man that looked just like me pinned to his seat by the dashboard. Blood continued to roll down his forehead. His hands still clutched the steering wheel white knuckled and a look of horror was still spread across his face. Rigor mortis is a beautiful thing, I guess. In the distance, I saw an ambulance cruising towards the car with lights flashing and the speakers occasionally letting out a squelch or two. In a state of disbelief, I rushed around to the back of the car only to be greeted by the Cadillac insignia. I rushed to the squad car and started yelling at the cop, hoping to get a response. Nothing. None came. I ran to a nearby driveway and picked up pebbles, starting to throw them at the cop's window. He suddenly sat up, alert, as he turned his head in my direction. With a quizzical look on his face, he turned his head away as if he hadn't seen me, and went back to his donut and morning paper. I ran as fast as I could, but I only got a few feet away when I tripped on something. As I hit the ground and lay there, a bright white light exactly like the one from before came over me again. It all came back to me in a flash, but pulling out of the driveway, running through the red light worried that I would be late getting t-boned by the damn Kia. Shielding my face with my hands from the shattered glass, trying desperately to gain control of the car again, going through the window of the two family, being pinned to my seat by the dashboard, and finally choking on my own blood as it welled up in my lungs. When I woke up this morning, I found the house to be empty. It was strange. I seriously doubt that my family would leave for my aunt's house without me. And on Christmas morning? No, something wasn't right. All the miscellaneously placed pictures of me that were on the walls and the hearth were gone. All other photos were still in place. But another thing that struck me as odd was the fact that there were no gifts that just last night were meticulously put under the tree this morning. Yeah, every day can be the one you want. Forever. Just don't be surprised when the price is steeper than you expect. Merry Christmas, wildlings. Keep your family close and love them while you can. And make the most of this holiday night.